Senator Mark Kirk is a Republican of Illinois, and he recently hired a guy named Sam Mahler to work on his staff. Now, the reason why this is noteworthy is that it highlights the problem of what's called the revolving door in politics, and more specifically, it's the revolving door between Wall Street and Washington. So this guy, Mahler, is a lobbyist from Fidelity Investments, and he's basically totally entrenched in trying to get special deals for Wall Street. I mean, that's his job. That's exactly what he was supposed to do. So you might think now, well, why is it that Mark Kirk hired him? Why is it that a politician hired him when he was a lobbyist? And why is it that this guy would accept a huge pay cut to leave his lobbying job, which is the better job financially, in order to work in government? Is it because now all of a sudden this guy cares about doing the right thing for his country? <laughs> Please. Uh, Huffington Post explains, quote, Mahler lobbied against a key new Department of Labor rule requiring investment advisors to manage investment accounts in the best interests of their clients rather than their own. The rule prohibits investment companies from steering retirees into holdings based on fees or other perks that accrue to the advisors. These kickbacks cost Am uh, American savers a combined $17 billion a year. So understand that. We're talking about a rule here that was for the American people, which made it so that you can't have private companies do outwardly corrupt shit where they only steer you towards certain uh, types of uh, financial decisions based on how rich they'll get. $17 billion a year this cost the American people because they were basically given bad advice by financial advisors, and more specifically, selfish advice, where the financial advisors know they're benefiting themselves over their clients. $17 billion the American people lost because of bad financial advisors. This guy's saying, no, I'm on the side of the companies, and I would like to continue to screw over the American people. Thank you very much. So the Obama administration comes along, and they draft a rule. They say, okay, well, going into effect in 2016, we're putting an end to this. You can no longer steer your clients solely based on your own private gain and personal gain that you want to get without any regard for, you know, whether or not you're doing the right thing by them. That's essentially fraud. It's basically a new kind of anti-fraud law that cracks down on this specific kind of fraud. So again, 2016, it's supposed to go into place. Which brings me full circle all the way back to why this guy Mahler decided to take a job with Senator Mark Kirk. He was hired specifically for the reason of lobbying against this and, and watering down this rule before it goes into effect in 2016. They're flaunting their corruption at this point, man. They don't even try, back in the day, of course, where there's always been corruption in politics, there always will be some degree of corruption in politics. But back in the day, people had the sense to like, let me at least try to hide the fact that what I'm doing I know is unethical, I know is immoral, and I know this isn't what is supposed to be my job. I'm supposed to look out for the American people. I'm supposed to give a shit about government. Whether you're a politician or whether you're somebody who's on the staff who needs to care about the process of how you draft bills. They're not even bothering to hide it anymore. They're just like, no, I am going to hire the lobbyist who specifically is here to try to help out special interests and screw over the American people. And that lobbyist is going to try to get rid of a rule that's going to help the American people according to all objective uh, economic observers. Our government's a joke, man. And understand it. They go on to explain in the article that this guy... And many others as well have gone from, you know, they go work in Washington, they work on some senator's staff or some congressman's staff, they uh, help do favors for people on Wall Street, the big banks, hedge funds, you name it. So then when they leave there, they immediately get hired by the people on Wall Street. They stay on Wall Street for X amount of years. Many of them go back to government to get new connections, to get more connections because the crowd is different than it was in 1998 or whatever, the last time they were there. So they work there a little bit. They get some new connections. You know, they jerk each other off at the country club and drink scotch. Then they go back to Wall Street, and it's the same thing. This is the revolving door. 
It goes around and around and around and around and around. Everybody in Washington, whether on the staff or the politicians themselves, they are buddy-buddy with everybody on Wall Street. And again, like you all know, it's a circle jerk of money. The, the corporations and the lobbyists give money to the politicians, the politicians do their bidding, and it goes round and round and round, and everybody's looking out for each other, and everybody's looking out for each other, and who gets screwed over in this entire process? You do! The American people do! You elect these people, they're supposed to represent you, they're supposed to do what you want them to do, they don't give a fuck about what you want! Not even a little bit! We don't even have 25% democracy in America. They don't even listen to you 25% of the time. That's not my opinion, that's a fact that's from a Princeton study which looked into the effect of how uh, American opinion translates into whether or not we get law based off of that. We get it 0% of the time if you're middle class or poor. Our opinions have no effect on what the lawmakers do. But what has a perfect effect? There's a perfect correlation between what the rich want, what the corporations want, what the billionaires want, and what we end up getting in terms of policy. That's not an accident. It's set up like that on purpose, essentially. Ever since money was viewed as free speech, oh, you can give as much as you want. Ever since that happened, it, you know, it's been clear that the people with the money have a louder voice and have more of a say in the democracy by definition! By definition, Sheldon Adelson is, you know, his voice counts much more than some grandmother in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So, I mean, the sad thing is, when we read this, it's like, should we even be surprised anymore? It couldn't be any more clear who the politicians are working for, and the answer is not you.